there friends nibs again out here in the garage today doing a little bit of goofing around and we got a wet and rainy uh, raw day outside it's actually not too bad it's not really cold but uh, it's rainy and windy so we're gonna keep it inside and I thought we would do a little bit of tinkering today <clears throat> and uh, what I'm gonna be working on is uh, this Remington 24 XBR scope that uh, I picked up recently and uh, it's a really nice scope uh, except for <laughs> it has a couple of minor uh, issues this crop and that would be the horizontal and the vertical crosshairs are both broken so uh, I've fixed a couple similar scopes to this I've never fixed this particular model here but uh, I think we can uh, take care of it um, I did take the end off it and uh, it looks very doable and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and tear into this I did open up my package I have a package of most of these scopes use uh, tungsten wire as a uh, crosshair and I had some uh, several feet of it I fixed several scopes uh, over the course of time here and it, I've only got like four or five inches left of tungsten wire here it's five ten thousandths of an inch tungsten wire it's very hard to see uh, with the naked eye <laughs> and uh, but uh, if I if I do my if I if I play my cards right I might have enough with what I have left to fix this guy so uh, I do have a camera up here <clears throat> looking down on the tabletop and uh, we'll get into uh, tearing this thing down um, it, other than that it has really clear <clears throat> picture um, I was actually able to capture a picture of what the crosshairs look like don't pay attention to the downrange stuff it just the best I could make it re resolve on the crosshairs was actually up against the fence in my backyard um, I'll put that up here now um, but both of the crosshairs are just kind of laying off to one side <clears throat> I did take another little video clip and I'll throw that in here real quick uh, for you guys um, and it's just uh, I, I was trying to capture there was actually a hummingbird and a couple of bumblebees flying around these uh, oh what do they call them hostas hosta plant flowers uh, and of course none of them would come around while I was uh, trying to but it, it's a really clear crystal clear image that that's about 25 yards away from my uh, where my scope was set up <clears throat> but uh, all right let's get into uh, tearing this thing down so pretty simple really um, so we want to take off this bell here the end bell and another thing I'm gonna do while I've got this thing taken apart the the lenses are not hazy or anything like that but they are dirty on both ends they're just got a little bit of crud on the outside and hopefully not on the inside that one's pretty clean the front end one has got some schmutz on it so but we're gonna clean those up and I really like to use these Zeiss uh, lens wipes uh, that you would use for your glasses they do a really good job don't leave a film behind so <clears throat> there is a little piece inside of here that's held in by two little flat blade screws on either side of the tube and we're going to go ahead and take those two little flat screws out should not require any kind of force to get those out <clears throat> You won't be able to see I'll barely be able to see the but uh, this is what we're working with right here this little <clears throat> piece here will set the scope off to the side for now and uh, so we have uh, one wire right here and one wire right here 
And essentially what we have to do is, so the one wire runs side to side where the screws are and the other one runs perpendicular to that. And there's little tiny drops of glue right where the old wires used to be attached. So let me see. There is a little notch there, that's good. So there is a little notch there to put the, the wire into. I was kind of wondering if there would be or not, so. Notch on that side. And there's a notch on that side too, so go ahead and Get rid of that old wire. So I've got the, the side to side slots cleaned up now. And we should be able to put that in there. So let me check on the That was one thing when I looked at it before I couldn't tell if there was alignment slots. But there's nice nice little they're just, they're very faint, but they're, they're there. The, uh, cause if they weren't there, it would be very difficult to, uh, get the crosshair exactly where it needed to go. Okay, that's going to make life a lot easier. And it definitely looks like the same size uh, crosshair material. And like I said, hopefully I've got enough here. Um, I ordered this. I had gotten a lit shirt scope uh, that needed new crosshairs um, years ago. was attached to this reel a minute ago. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's there. So what we're going to want to do is take some painter's tape, 
sure they had this already all set up beforehand, but have it in the groove yet but I do have it attached to the painters tape now which will make life a little easier maybe Got it where it needs to be. So now I have it aligned and you guys can't see it, but I can just barely make it out, but almost working, working blind, being able to feel it in the groove there. Um, so now I am going to take my, I've got this Loctite uh, super glue and I'm going to clean this nozzle off first. Stand by, let me grab a cloth. drop a super glue on both of these edges. All right, I'm going to bring you back over to the normal camera for a minute. So I am going to uh, let that dry for a while <laughs> and uh, once uh, it has solidified I'm going to do the other one off camera and then I'll bring you on and show you how to uh, finish it up, put it together, we'll clean the lenses up and uh, hopefully it'll be ready to go. But that one looks really nice, that first one looks really nice so stand by we'll uh, get this finished up. Alrighty guys, I am back and uh, I have got the, <laughs> yeah, actually successfully, I believe successfully got these crosshairs put in here. Um, I was able to capture a little uh, picture of it, um, very close up kind of deal. Um, and uh, <laughs> they they turned out pretty good. Um, little, uh, 
So another little trick that I've read about, but I never tried, and but I had to try it here because actually my five ten thousandths wire broke and I didn't have enough to do the second crosshair. But um, one thing I had read that people used was uh, unwaxed uh, dental floss and you take it and you kind of comb it out with a uh, razor blade and get it to start separating and then you can get one tiny strand out of that dental floss and uh, it's actually just as fine as that five ten thousandths and honestly I think it's going to be a stronger crosshair than the tungsten wire um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, stick it back in into the uh, scope and uh, we'll see how it looks. They both look uh, very much symmetrical. So I'll bring you over here to the... Yeah, it looks really good. So um, now here is one of the tough parts is getting this back in here without touching those wires. Touch one of the wires. I'm just gonna. Sorry, I got you. I got you off. Uh... So I need to figure out some. So it's not wanting to slide back in there good for me. So. I don't know if I got a little bit of glue around the outside that's keeping me from sliding back in right or, or what the deal is here. Maybe there's an no alignment. I just know I'm going to mess up these crosshairs trying to get this back out of there. Darn it. All right, I'm gonna pause here for a minute and uh, get this out of here, hopefully without breaking these crosshairs, and uh, I'll be right back with you. So I was able to get it back out of there. I got very lucky without touching those crosshairs and damaging them. Um, <clears throat> I'm just finishing up. I got the one screw already aligned in there, and I'm putting the, the last screw on the other side here. Turn it backwards until it skips into the thread and then slowly work it in. So my crosshairs are still intact. Let's see, they appear to be aligned well with the, so this is the, the front one here is the stationary. The back one actually can move a little bit, but here to be nice and perpendicular lined up with the the front stationary mount so now let me screw our bell back on here Get these out the back window real quick. Just give me a second. All right, those are looking pretty good. Actually, the uh, the filament of the dental floss turned out better than the the tungsten wire. It's the tiniest little bit heavier. Not enough that I'm going to redo it. But the, uh, the tungsten wire is not perfectly straight. It's got a little squiggle on one side. 
but uh, for me, for my work, <laughs> that's good. So uh, stand by. I'm going to hook up the scope cam again and uh, do a try to capture an image, and I'll finish it up and get you guys a picture of it, and uh, hopefully that'll be the end of it. <laughs> um, I, I may down the road take it back apart and replace that tungsten wire with another piece of uh, the dental floss but uh, it worked out pretty good the dental cloth dental floss stayed nice and straight and uh, that tungsten wire I've had that problem in the past where it uh, just did not stay did not stay stationary uh, or did not stay straight it gets it gets very twisty and uh, takes a bend and keeps a bend so stand by while I try to capture this image alrighty so <laughs> This, this, for whatever reason, this cam, scope cam, it seems to not like to try to resolve on higher power scopes. I was trying to do a picture through my 36, my Tasco Tasco uh, 3644, and I had the same kind of trouble, but I did capture a halfway decent image. At least it gives you an idea of what the uh, crosshairs look like. I'll put that up here now. And uh, as you can see, um, just off to the left, mostly that uh, windage crosshair, the left to right, over on the left-hand side, the very edge of it is not very straight. Like I said, uh, I, I may try to redo that crosshair with the, uh, the dental floss filament, uh, but for now... It's good enough for me, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to get this mounted up on some or a rifle. I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to do it on yet, but uh, it's working. So the last thing I said I was going to talk to you guys or show you guys to do is, um, and I'll just bring you down here like this. We'll do this real quick. Um, so these Zeiss lens wipes. Um, just like you're cleaning your glasses, uh, open that guy up. Uh, these are actually intended for use on scopes and other optics, but you just take it and clean all around the inside. Look at that gunk, rust. Tell the lenses on this guy are crystal clear. Just needed a little bit of cleaning is all. Might end up with a little spot of lint there or something, but then you can turn around and this one wasn't too bad, but we'll go ahead and just touch it up anyway. So I have used these uh, on older like I find it a lot in like the older weaver scopes. I don't know if it's from condensation getting inside there or whatever, but they actually have like dirt on the inside of the lenses. And uh, so you take that apart and you have to clean around the inside of the lens as well. But this one is really clean inside. So it's just the outside was probably sitting. This front lens was the one that was all dirty. So it was probably sitting like this in a corner somewhere in whatever person's house was uh, it was in before it was on like an old bench rest rifle um, which uh, it was some sort of mystery six millimeter and I really wasn't interested in getting into figuring that all out so I just made an offer on the scope and, and they took it so but there you go uh, that should be good to go for a while like I said I may down the road redo that uh, first crosshair with the dental floss I think that turned out a lot better um, never tried that trick before um, some scopes uh, you some scopes have the filaments soldered in and you almost need the tungsten wire if you're gonna do it uh, OEM so to speak but uh, this one was actually already glued in you can do the other ones if you get the all the solder off you could glue them into the other ones like that uh, that 
uh, lit shirts that I fixed a while back. The weavers are the same way. They have a little brass ring instead of that aluminum uh, sleeve. They have a little brass ring and that's what the uh, crosshairs are attached to. And usually they're soldered on and uh, I've done uh, a few of those in the past too. So that's why I don't have any more tungsten wire left. <laughs> but anyway, another long video. Uh, I'll try to edit out as much of the garbage as I can and uh, just give you guys the highlights. But uh, there you go. That is uh, a pretty good repair on this uh, cool old scope. They only made these for, from what I've read, about two years, uh, Remington did. This one's a really low serial number, uh, 600 and some. <clears throat> and uh, They didn't make very many of them either, so got myself a nicely repaired pretty rare scope so anyway hope you guys like the video till next time have a great day